Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. The zucchini is coming on and today we're going to make zucchini lasagna. Also, fruit is delicious and sweet. The insects think so too. We'll talk about how to keep them at bay. That's just ahead on the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Kathy Faust. Ms. Kathy is a UT Extension agent right here in Shelby County. And Mr. D is here today. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, so Ms. Kathy, yes. what are you going to be preparing for us today? Zucchini lasagna. All right, sounds mm -hmm. good, sounds good. So let's talk a little bit about zucchini. Nutritional value, is it good to eat? Oh, it is wonderful to eat. Okay. And you know, I've recently started doing programs, Dining with Diabetes. Okay. And everyone is so concerned about their A1C levels. Well, okay. And we have to count carbs. And we're telling people to limit their carbs to about 30 per day. Oh, wow. Because predictions are by 2050, half of us will have diabetes. And by wow. eating lots of zucchini, okay. you can eat a whole zucchini and only has six grams of carbohydrate and uh -huh. about 30 calories. Wow. It's high in potassium. Okay. It has more potassium than a banana has vitamin A, vitamin C, lots of beta carotene, okay. and they recommend that you leave the peel on, although I did peel the zucchini okay. for our zucchini lasagna this morning. All right, so let's start with the zucchini uh, lasagna. Okay, and like I said, you will have the recipe if you would like it. The first thing that you have to do is boil your zucchini, okay. and you can profit by my mistake, because <laughs> I boiled it for too long, and the first batch just kind of fell apart. Okay. I boiled it for 10 minutes. Don't boil the zucchini for more than three minutes. More than three minutes. And you okay. see, you want to slice it you know, about a quarter of an inch thick, one half an inch thick, and you make it like your lasagna noodles. And I put it on paper towels, and you see how much moisture there was in it. Okay. But you go ahead and get your water boiling, and you salt the water, put in a little bit of oil, and then you put about two medium-sized zucchini, about six to eight inches long. Right. You put that in your boiling salted water. Watch it carefully because, okay. like I said, <laughs> if you overcook it, when you try to pick it up, it just falls apart. So we, we had our two medium zucchini, and I used one pound of ground beef, although the recipe called for just half a pound. Okay. So you go ahead and brown your ground beef with about one-fourth cup of chopped onion. Okay. And oh, it just smells so good as this is cooking. And then you add two um, small tomatoes, uh, one can of tomato paste, basil, thyme, and oregano. Oh, that's a good and rather smell. than watch you have you all watch me, I just went ahead, trust me, I did this ahead <laughs> of time. And you cook that down for about 10 minutes with just a fourth of a cup of water. And the reason for this is because your um, Zucchini makes so much water, that's all the water you need. So let's go ahead. Okay. First thing we want to do is spray the pan all right. so you won't have a sticky mess. Now this is cold. If this were hot, it would be a whole lot easier to work with. But we're just going to spoon it in here cold. And I see Mr. D eyeing that even though yeah, it's cold. Hold up <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He's eyeing yeah. it pretty good. But, yeah, I'm um, glad you did extra beef. You can't have too much beef. Well, you know, the recipe called for one-fourth of a cup, and I said, I mean, one-fourth of a, one-half of a pound, and I said, oh, let's go ahead. Uh, one-half of a pound, good. And a more is better, pound. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you, I assembled this night before last when we were having that storm, and the lights were flickering, oh, and I boy. thought, oh, no, if the lights go off, um, I don't know what I'll do. So we've got um, half of our meat mixture, in the bottom of the pan. Okay. Now we're just gonna take the loose uh, zucchini and lay that on top as if it were lasagna noodles. And you could actually call this, um, instead of noodles, they call it zoodles. Zoodles. Yeah, Zoodle. they call okay. this because it's zucchini. So you lay that down. And then 
I like ricotta cheese. Wow. The recipe calls for ricotta or uh, fat-free cottage cheese. So okay. you mix this with about a fourth of a cup mozzarella cheese Ooh. and one egg beaten and one teaspoon of flour. You put the whole thing in there. Lots of people don't like cottage cheese, hmm. but the ricotta gives it a nice flavor. Okay. And then we're gonna spoon the rest of our meat on Yeah, we top. gotta get that in there for Mr. Dean. Oh, we gotta yeah. get the meat in there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, we worked together for 17 years. Yeah, Was it did. 17 or 14? Yeah, we pretty much yeah. can read each other's minds. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I knew that you need at least a pound of ground meat. <laughs> and so this serves four. <laughs> this is, yeah. but it, I think it's four very, very generous servings. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, and we're going to put the rest of the noodles on top. Okay. Our zucchini. Ms. Kathy, those look perfectly cut. Thank you. Wow. Well, like I said, this wasn't my first try. <laughs> That's why you need to buy more zucchini than originally planned. And I bought this about an hour ago okay. at Kroger <laughs> because I wanted to have some to show for the demonstration. Now, for those of you who have children that won't eat anything green, you want to sprinkle about one fourth of a cup mozzarella cheese oh, yeah. on top of this. Uh, I'm sorry, but first you bake it. Okay. 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 You bake it like this, 375 degrees for about 30 minutes. If all of your ingredients are cold, you might want to give it 45 minutes. Okay. After the um, time that you bake it, you sprinkle on top about one-fourth of a cup mozzarella cheese. Let that melt and, and you end voila. up with a finished wow. product that looks like this. That's good. Okay. So were we going to sample that, or we're going to talk a little bit more about that? Oh, we're we're going to sample that. Yeah, you know Mr. Oh, Dean wants to, to get some of that. Oh, you're ready to sample it now. Okay, let me put this that. aside. <laughs> and we will sample this now. Okay. okay. Let's see. And again, you know, zucchini is something that you can grow in your garden. Mm -hmm. you know, this will be real good for your recipe. And we will have this recipe, of course, on our website, familyplotgarden.com. So you can go there and get this nice recipe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Instead of having French fries, you can even make zucchini French fries, mm -hmm. which you would do okay. in that case. Go ahead and slice the zucchini. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead and slice the zucchini about this long, and you can dip it in breadcrumbs right. and uh, a little Parmesan cheese. Put it in a 450 degree oven for about 20 minutes and you can have the zucchini french fries. You can also have zucchini chips. Mm. If you have a dehydrator, set your dehydrator at 130 degrees and put the chips, you know, slice it really thin. Mm -hmm. Put the chips on there, slices, for about five hours and let them dry out and then you can put your seasoning on. Now one of the sources I read said to salt your zucchini before preparing it because it has so much moisture. I'm saying if we're trying to cut back on salt, don't put any salt in the zucchini. Uh, just realize that, that it is going to make a lot of moisture. Another thing you can do is freeze the zucchini. Okay. Go ahead and slice it up real thin. I like to put mine in a spaghetti pot and just dip it down in boiling water. Blanch it for about three minutes. Mm. Don't overcook it. Pull it out and put it in a big pot of ice water. And then you can uh, drain it bag it, put the date on it. This is from February of 2016, and you've got your um, zucchini ready to go, zucchini or squash. One last thing is okay. we no longer recommend canning zucchini okay. because one of our most recent sources said uh, that the, there are just too many variables. We used to say pressure can for 25 minutes at 11 pounds of pressure. Now we're saying your best bet is to either freeze it or dry it or pickle the zucchini. Yeah, pickle. And I've got some good pickling recipes well, Miss Kathy, we appreciate this. And this is good. Oh, Pick good. I'm, I'm good. glad I like you it. like it. Very good. Thank I you, Miss Kathy. Too. We appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you.
All right, Mr. D, fruit tree pest. And we, you know, we're getting the calls at the office, you know, about peaches, plums, nectarines, and pests that yep. affect them, so. You know, uh, you got a fruit tree out there right now, you've already got fruit on it. Yes. Uh, if it has a, a worm in it, mm -hmm. that that fruit is already, you know, it's, it, it, it's gone and there's not anything you can do about it. If you grow tree fruits in, in this area, uh, you need to put them under a regular spray program, home orchard spray. Um, if by some chance you have some, you haven't done that, and you have some fruit on your trees that are not already affected by, if it's a peach plum or nectarine, it would be the plum curculio probably. And you can look at the fruit. If you look at the fruit and it looks clean, and it doesn't have a little C-shaped scar on the fruit, you may very well not have a worm in it yet. And go ahead and start. Mm following a spray schedule using a home orchard spray that you can get at any lawn and garden center. It'll have an insecticide and a fungicide in it. And you just follow the label directions and do that every week, you know, once a week. Uh, if it doesn't rain, you can stretch that interval out to 10 days. Uh, if it rains, <laughs> you spray today and it rains tomorrow, you spray, you assume or pretend that that application didn't even take wow. place because it washed it off. Um, but uh, a regular spray program is the only way that you're going to have fruit that don't have worms and, or rots and things like that in it. Um, and then, like I said, if, you already have, if that fruit is already infected with a, an insect or a disease, there's not anything you can do about it. You can pick it off, destroy it get or whatever, you know, just get rid of it. But it's not going to, unless, unless you want to, uh, you know, you can cut around the worm if you want to and throw it out and eat the part that's not affected or cut the rod out and all that kind of stuff. And, and you may salvage a bite or two out of the fruit, but, uh, um, you know, got to be careful doing that. I thought you were going to mention that uh, these worms would be good protein. <laughs> I would, except for all of the E. coli recalls yeah. that we've yeah. had. And, you know, uh, so I would probably try to resist, you know, eating uh, a worm. And if you see that you've only got a half a worm in a fruit, oh. then, then that's too late to worry about that, too. <laughs> yeah. Now, what about, can we talk specifically about, let's say, peaches? I mean, what pest do you know that attacks peaches? Peaches, it would be the plum curculio okay. is the insect that, that uh, the number one insect with peaches. Of course, stink bugs will oh, attack, man. you know, and, and if you have uh, fruit that are kind of, cat-faced or misshapen and curled and all that, that might very well be a stink bug or, mm -hmm. you know, something with sucking mouth parts that, that caused that to happen. Um, but, you know, with a, with a plum curculio, all she, the female will, will land on that fruit. She'll cut a little circle, semicircle, and mm -hmm. lay an egg underneath it. And I don't, I don't know whether she pats it back down ah. or not, but she <laughs> just lays an egg under that little semicircle so you'll have a little half moon scar on the fruit and you won't know that you the fruit will continue to grow and it'll right. look fine but uh, the caterpillar is doing the same thing too uh, how many eggs do you think usually they'll lay one on each fruit just one just one yeah because they want to make sure that little fella's got plenty to eat wow. you know they, they don't usually do more than one on, on a fruit that I've seen they'll okay. go to there but they'll fly to the next fruit okay you know and do the same thing and just continue on uh, you know, with apples, it's, uh, you know, there's a coddling moth. There, there's mm. several different critters that do the same thing. But, and, and, it, and, you know, with most insects, we say it's good to identify what you've got before you treat. But that's not the case with fruit trees. Okay. Uh, you need okay. to do a preventative, and, and the home orchard sprays are broad spectrum enough that they control pretty much all the pests that are on there. Right. Um, would it control stink bugs, though? You think? Uh, kind of, okay. sort of, right. you know, kind of, sort of. I mean, you're talking about most of the home orchard sprays have cap, uh, carbaryl yeah. or malathion in them. And uh, if it's the malathion, I will do a better job probably on stink bug. But, right. you know, if, if you've got stink bugs, uh, unfortunately, what, what you need to use on a home orchard is not labeled for home, home orchard okay. use. You know, commercial guys can use some hotter materials, okay. but uh, you probably don't need to be doing that around the home. Two bricks, you know, get out there, catch them, <laughs> Two and smack bricks. them. 
about a few of them. What, what about pears? We actually had somebody pears, ask Pears, pretty much the same thing. You treat apples and pears the same way. Uh, apples and pears don't seem to have as much insect pressure here as peaches, plums, and nectarines. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, again, the same schedule. And, and our home orchard spray guide that you can get from our office, yeah. Well, it has apples and, and it has pears. Some of the some of the diseases, like fire blight, for instance, when you're looking at pears, it'll say, see the apple mm -hmm. section, mm -hmm. see the apple section. So I would treat my apples and pears pretty much the same way. Okay. And uh, treat your peaches, plums, and nectarines the same way. Okay. Uh, now, let me ask you this, because we've been getting this question quite a bit lately. So we have folks who want to control their pest organically on their fruit trees. What do you say about that? Chainsaw. <laughs> Chainsaw. Wow. Yeah. I, I know of nothing wow. that they can use organically unless they're, you know, standing out there with a water hose oh, and defending them. I, I know of nothing or, that, that will work for fruit trees. And, the, and so my suggestion to you is, uh, if you want to do that, is, is grow something else. Don't. And that's why I don't have a peach tree in my orchard right. you know, or a plum or a nectarine. They're by far the, the hardest to grow you know, without having to be out there every week, you know, spraying. Uh, so I don't know, you know, I, I, I wish I did. Right, I wish sure. I could tell you something sure. that would work. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just not going to happen. I mean, even BT on the caterpillars. Are, now, if we come up with a, a genetically modified uh, fruit tree yeah. that has BT in the fruit, uh, you know, it would help on the plum curculio and the yeah. caterpillars and things like that. But we have none of those at this point. And I doubt, well, I, I don't know that that's yeah. going to happen anytime soon. Wow, how about that? Chainsaw. Yeah. Wow, yeah. It's mm -hmm. so difficult to try to do something different. Organic. You know, plant your ornamental shrub or something, you know. Okay. And I guess, too, you know, they can look for resistant varieties. I mean, I don't, know of any, any I don't know of any varieties, varieties that are resistant to okay. insects. Now, there are some varieties that may have some res disease resistance. Right. But, uh, and, and I don't know of any of those that's res that are yeah. resistant to brown rot, which is, you know, the major disease on peaches, plums, and nectarines. Uh, I just don't know that any of them exist. You know, okay. you, ha you may have some that are resistant to bacterial spot, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Some varieties are more susceptible to bacterial spot than others are. But as far as the diseases and insects, I think they, they doesn't make them any difference what variety you've got. Well, as you always say, peaches, plums, and nectarines are going mm -hmm. to be pretty tough. And they're pretty tough. Buy them, you know. <laughs> Jones Orchard, yeah. you know, Ms. Ms. Juanita and uh, Mr. Leewood and and uh, and their crew do a real good job yes, growing do. peaches, and, and you know they take care of them. And so, uh, you know, go that route. All right, well we appreciate that, Mr. D. Always good. Uh, we're going to take a look at our pepper plant. We think there may be some nutrient deficiency going on with this. If you look at the older leaves, you can see some yellowing. Uh, again, to me, that's always an indicator of a nutrient deficiency. And you see this first on your older leaves, especially for your pepper plants and for your uh, tomato plants uh, as well. What needs to be done uh, is possibly going back in with a nitrogen fertilizer so we can green uh, this plant up. Uh, we'll put that down, possibly do a side dress with that, uh, water it in, and what should happen uh, in a few weeks is you will see this plant start to green up and then from there it should be fine. All right, so here's our Q&A session. And Ms. Kathy, you have a comment. You jump in there with us, all right? So here's our first viewer email. Uh, what is the best way to control flea beetles? They're eating holes in my snap bean leaves, Mr. D. Flea beetles. According to the Red Book, <laughs> uh, UT's uh, Red Book, uh, they pretty much group all of the beetles that feed on snap beans together. Like the together. bean beetle? Bean beetles, yeah. the Mexican bean beetle, okay. the bean leaf beetle, and uh, you know, they're pretty much okay. the same thing, we'll take care of it. And there are, let's see, one, two, three, four <laughs> things listed on here. Carbaryl is listed first, uh, and then bifenthrin, zeta cypermethrin, and gamma cyhalothrin. Okay. Are the four products that he's are good at that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so just just find you a product that's got one one or more of these active ingredients in it. Follow the label direction. 
Uh, I see there are some waiting periods. Bifenthrin and Zeta Cypermethrin have a three-day waiting period before harvest. Some of the Gamma Cyhalothrin is seven days. Uh, Carbaryl three days. Uh, uh, so you need to be sure you follow the label. Uh, but uh, one thing about leaf damage on beans, uh, most beans, and this includes, this is true for soybeans out mm -hmm. there in the, in the farmer's field, that plant can tolerate quite a bit yeah, more leaf injury that. than mm -hmm. you think it might be able to. So you may think that the beans are just destroyed, but there still is, as long as there's some green tissue there, the photosynthesis taking place and, and the plants can, can handle a little bit of pressure. Right. But if, if they're really wearing you out, go with one of these products and this is not something that you need to do in advance or as a preventative measure. If you see you've got the problem, go in there and hit it mm -hmm. and then that'll take care of you for a while. Okay. If it comes back, you know, hit it again. Hit it again? But, uh, yeah. yeah. Of course, I've seen this in some of the home gardens. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, you know, two little holes in the leaves. Yeah, if it's uh, just a few little holes, few I wouldn't holes. worry about it. Right. But mm -hmm. you can do, uh, you know, weed control is important. Right. And get rid of some of that old crop residue. Because that's, that's where they're actually that's uh, yeah. overwintering. So right. if you do that, you'll just be just fine. So here's our next question. Are the Master Gardener applications out yet? I think I can handle that one. Okay. Uh, they are out. Um, and uh, that end date to get the application back in to the Shelby County Extension Office will be August the 1st. How many are you accepting this year? Uh, we'll see how many of your applications come in. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what we'll do with that. Uh, but those applications are available at our office, of course. Uh, you can go online, memphisareamastergardeners.org. Just download it, print it off, fill it out, mail it in, or go to your local library branches. Yeah, okay. So if you can get it that way, send it on in. It's a good program. We'll be more than happy to have you for sure. How many of you we trained since 1995? Since 1995, 1,700. Wow. It's a lot, isn't it? It is. And you know about that because you and, and Booker. In the first year uh, in 95 yeah, is started the first out. class. Right. That's right. So it's still going on strong. Good group. Good, good program. Good program. No good group. Yeah, it is. Good group. All right. So here's our next of your email. I think I have vine borers in my squash. Can I control them with insecticides? And that's the, it's almost being a stand, it's almost a standard question now, Mr. D. Yeah. You know, when you grow squash, it's like, wait a minute, my plant has collapsed. What, what happened? So it's the old vine borer. So can you control it with insecticides? No. <laughs> you can't control it with insecticides, but you can prevent it from happening. By, and this is a, another one like I mentioned most of the time with insecticides, we stay waiting until you have a problem, mm -hmm. identify the pest and treat it. But this is kind of like the fruit trees. Oh boy. You need to go with a preventative treatment. And there are several products if you, if you, if you treat them. Again, I'm reading from the Red Book. Okay. Reading right. uh, from the Red Book. Um, uh, it's got carbaryl, bifenthrin, zeta cypermethrin, esphenvalerate, and permethrin are all, uh, and spinosad are all listed to, to prevent squash vine borer. But it's basically, you need to direct your sprays at the base of the plant. Okay. You don't have to spray the entire plant and repeat, repeat applications up to six times, but not more than once every seven days. So I would spray mm. six times, wait seven, I mean, spray once, wait seven, and just keep so on doing on. it, keep on wow. doing it to get all of those applications in. And that's, that's with a carbaryl. Uh, the bifenthrin doesn't have, and, and the, the pyrethrin that I mentioned, uh, bifenthrin, zeta, cypermethrin, esphenvalerate, permethrin, and even the spinosad, uh, well, there are, different limits depending okay. upon what, which product you're using. Some just say wait at least seven days between each application and they don't give you a, neck, uh, uh, a limit to the okay. number of applications you can make. Uh, one, the permethrin says do not apply more than eight times per season, but it doesn't say wait at least seven days between wow. applications. And uh, Spinosad, maximum of six applications per season and then wait five days before reapplying. Okay. All right, Mr. D, Ms. Kathy. Out of time. Thanks for being here. Thank you. All right. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org, and the mailing address is familyplot 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. 
or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. To get Kathy's delicious recipe for zucchini lasagna, go to familyplotgarden.com. We also have more information about the fruit tree pests Mr. D talked about, and you can also get a Master Gardener application. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.